Hello and welcome. My name is Chris and in this video we'll learn about the animation workflow in Expressive Animator. But before I explain how the timeline works and how easy it is to animate in Expressive Animator, we'll have to first take a look at the layers panel and the process before working on an animation. Here is our illustration. And here is the layer panel with illustration being on layer 1. We can also rename this layer, like illustration. And also we can create a new layer. I will name it background because I want to add a background on this layer. I will select the rectangle tool and enable the snapping option and drag a rectangle. I will also disable the stroke and choose the black color for the rectangle and that's how you make a background. Now we will lock the layer and we can also hide and unhide the layer elements. Now I will choose to work on this illustration layer. Here we can notice that we have groups. We can open them and see their contents. Here we have a clip group and a clip mask inside the group. More about clip mask and clip pads in another video where I will show you how to use clip pads and clip masks and also how to draw inside and create a clip pad automatically. For now, I will focus on showing how to create a group. So I will select these two rectangles and now I will right click and choose group. You can also do that by using the keyboard shortcut, Control or Command plus G to group. And if you double click on the group, you will enter the group's context. Here you will notice that only these two objects are present in the context. Now you can also enter the object context by double clicking on the object. But first, I will rename the rectangle to purple rectangle. And now we can double click on the object or press the enter button. And as you can see, we are in the object context. Now I will draw a rectangle and choose a blue color. I can also go back in the context and we can also exit the context by pressing the X button there. And as you can see, these all rectangles are now grouped. I want to show you something cool you can do with the contexts. So I will ungroup this and I will arrange the blue rectangle. So I'll right click, choose arrange and send it to backwards. And now the blue rectangle is in the middle of these two rectangles. So I'll double click on it to enter its context and I will create a new rectangle and make it red color. And you will notice that the red rectangle will be above the blue one but below the purple one. So when I will exit the context, you will notice that the red one is below the purple one, but is above the blue one. Now that we know how to group and ungroup, I will delete these rectangles because we no longer need them. Now I will show you how the timeline works. So I will go in the settings. And you will notice that the duration of the animation is set to 3 seconds and I will make it 5 seconds and that will reflect in the timeline. Here we can set the FPS. So for example, 24 FPS will reflect in the timeline, but I will go with the 60 FPS for this example. In Expressive Animator, there are two ways to animate your objects. So I will select the pencil and show you the first method which is the auto record keyframes. So I will select the auto record keyframes button and go to the two seconds mark. And now I will make changes to the object. So I will rotate and change its position. Now let's play and see it. Now we want to do the exact same thing, but this time manually. So I will click on this plus button and choose the rotate animator. 
and again and choose the position animator and go to the two seconds mark and make changes to the objects like rotate and change its position. Now let's play and see it. As you can see, it plays exactly the same as the one we've done with the auto keyframes. Now that we are on the timeline, I will show you how to zoom in and zoom out and also how to scroll on the timeline. So I will undo that to see the keyframes. And from this control, I can zoom out like that. We can also zoom out to see the individual frames. And we can also scroll. And also we can do the same thing here. We can zoom in and zoom out. Another useful thing is to position your cursor, hold Ctrl or Command and scroll with the middle mouse button like that. This way you will zoom in and zoom out depending on where your cursor is on the timeline. Before I move on to the keyframes, I want to show you how to set your work area. So I will hold Ctrl or Command and drag on the timeline duration bar like that. And you will notice that the playhead will go only in that work area. Let's play it again. Of course, it will repeat in the same area. So now we will move on to the keyframes, but before that, I will disable the work area. And to do that, we'll hold Ctrl or Command and click on the timeline duration bar like that. Now let's go here and let's play with the keyframes. First off, let's play the animation first. Okay, now if we select the keyframes and right click on them, we can choose to reverse them. Like that, I will play it. Now the animation plays in reverse. Now we will choose to do that again and it will be back to its original animation. So what else can we do with the keyframes? For example, I will go to the one second time mark and I will choose to change the pencil position, for example, like that. And you will notice that it added a keyframe here on the position animator. Now, if I choose to do that on the rotation, it will add a keyframe on the rotation animator as well. We can also do that here. I will change the position and rotation, and it will add the keyframes automatically. I will undo that. There is one thing to keep in mind that if the object doesn't have the animator, when you do some changes, let's say we change its scale, it won't add the keyframes for the scale because the object doesn't have it. And the only way to add keyframes automatically is to use the record button. So I will undo that and show you again how to use the record button. I will go on the three seconds mark and scale the pencil. And as you can see, the scale animator has been added on the timeline. Let's see it. But for this animation, I don't need a scale animator, so I will undo all of it. And now let's say we want to loop this animation. And how can we do that? I will first select these two keyframes here and move them here. And to be more accurate, we can hold shift and it will snap to the duration on the timeline. For example, like that, I'm holding shift and moving them. The same thing you can do with the playhead. By holding shift and dragging the playhead, you will be able to snap to a time mark on the timeline. Now, I will select these two first keyframes and go to the end of the animation and I will duplicate them with Ctrl plus D. Let's play the animation. And as you can see, it loops perfectly. Moving on to the visibility bars, I will toggle this pencil's visibility bar 
and with this visibility bar we can move keyframes like that and also we can resize this visibility bar making the object invisible until the playhead meets with its visibility bar like that now if i hold shift i can snap the visibility bar along with its keyframes on the timeline and also if i hold option or alt I can move the visibility bar along without affecting the keyframes. On the bottom left of the timeline, there is a button which will open the filter options for the timeline. Choosing this option will show only the selected items. For example, if you don't have anything selected, it won't show in the timeline. If I select the hand and also the pencil, just these two items will show in the timeline. We have disabled the option, like you see. And now it's time to move on to the next option, which is the show not animated. By default, in expressive animator, if you select an object, it will show in the timeline. But now with this option disabled, it won't show even though it is selected. The next option requires me to select an object from a group just to show the effect. Here in the timeline you can see that if we collapse this it will hide its children. Now with that option disabled it will act like it's not in the group. And next we have the scroll to options. The first option I will demonstrate in a second so I will select the objects and I will auto record them just for this example. I will select the pencil and make sure you look here. And now I will select the background. As you can see, it scrolled automatically to that selected object. Again, pencil and background pencil. And if we disable this, it won't scroll to that selected element. And you will have to manually scroll there just like that. Now I will undo all of this. The next and the final option is the play speed. I will toggle the visibility bar off to show you the effect and I will play the animation at the normal speed. Now let's double that speed and let's play it. As you can see, it plays much, much faster. Let's try to slow it down. And now let's play the animation, which goes really, really slow. There is one more thing I want to show you on the timeline. First, I will set it to the normal play speed. And now I will zoom out. And then I will click the go to the end button here like that in expressive animator like in other animation software when you go with the playhead to the end you will notice that it doesn't go exactly to the last frame that's because the last frame is not visible so in order to make a perfect loop you have to be on the last frame and to do that you can hold control or command and click this go to the end button just like that Again, hold Ctrl or Command and click on the button to go to the last frame. That's it for this tutorial. If you learned something, consider liking the video, subscribe and share it with your friends and co-workers. See you in the next video.